Okay, hello friends. Um, I've been wanting to make a video for a while. A lot of things came up in my own personal life. If you want to hear more about that, I'll put a timestamp in the description, in the comments, you can skip to that, but I don't really want to spend the beginning of the video on it because I'm sure a lot of people don't really care all that much and that's fine. Um, but yeah, so I've been wanting to make a video for a while and I've been bouncing around what I want to talk about and do I want to continue talking about some of the characters I haven't covered before or get into Royal and why I uh, don't really like Maroki and I'm not a huge fan of Kasumi but that's a whole other thing and don't hate me and we'll talk about that later. I'm not gonna not talk about that and I've also thought about making videos about Bloodborne because oh my goodness I've been playing a lot of Bloodborne lately in my free time but yeah but I decided to settle on talking about social media and particularly around the lens of Persona 5, since the fan site is a huge aspect of the game. Um, I think was really supposed to be an important element of the game, whether they achieved that correctly or not. That's a whole other conversation. But I do think it's important to address this and how social media affects us in our everyday lives. Um, I've been wanting to talk about it for a while since there was some controversy in our own fan community. I wasn't really sure how to speak out on it. I don't think I'm going to really get into the details of that. Uh, if you're aware of it, that's fine. If you're not, it's pretty easy to find out. And if you don't really care, the subject matter is still relevant because I think it's relevant to most of us right now in our lives. Um, so. Persona 5 has this structure, right? It has this fan site that Mishima put together. Uh, it's how they find requests for mementos, which is the collective unconscious. Um, that's how they cancel people, I guess. Um, <laughs> but it's also a meter. You're able to see your perception of everyone else in the world as the game progresses. Near the end of the game, you basically disappear more or less, and that's based off of people not believing in the Phantom Thieves anymore. And that may sound a little silly, um, in the kind of regard of you fundamentally exist regardless of anything else. Um, I mean, setting aside needing parents and whatnot, you are fundamentally, physically, here. You are a person. But how you define yourself is very much based on other people. There's been a lot of philosophical debate about whether you exist outside of the idea of somebody else. There's also the more evolutionary theory that I tend to stick by because I can be a little, uh, a little bit of a stick in the mud, I suppose. But the evolutionary concept that in order for humans to have survived, to have progressed and not been eaten by a million dinosaurs was if we combined forces, right? Because one-on-one, -on -one, we're not really that strong. Outside of anime, I guess. But <laughs> we depend on other people for our survival. There's a part of us that has evolved. And it very much is a part of us that feels hurt if we're rejected. Or we fundamentally want to be part of a group. And I think that very much stems from that survival concept. If you're shoved out in the wild by yourself and there's a bunch of lions, like, you're pretty screwed. But if you have a whole group of people working together, you're usually okay. So being set out aside from the group can mean death. And it's not, the way that evolves is usually the people who had those more sensitive feelings or emotions tended to be the ones who survived. And our temperament tends to be hereditary. So it's usually what we get from our parents or what we're related to. Um, it's a lot more complicated than that, but that's that's all you really need to understand. So in the concept of social media, and specifically Mishima, 
um, he wants to be part of a group. You can see this before the game starts. I mean, okay, you literally can't see it before the game starts because you haven't started the game yet. But it's been in action before you've seen it. The reason why people know that Joker is a juvenile delinquent is because of Mishima spreading that information. The reason he spread that information is because he wants to be part of the volleyball team. He wants to be part of the crowd. You get the idea that he's never really been part of something. You have his social link, which later on he makes amends to someone who used to bully him and by taking the higher ground. One, we find out that Mishima was bullied a lot before he came to Shujin, and that really does change your outlook on social interactions and how important it is to be part of a group. A lot of times when you are on the outside, you're not just alone on the outside. You're usually ostracized. That's not always the case, but a lot of times it is. And a lot of times kids can use this to secure their own place um, by pointing out another, by pointing out the other person the, they set themselves as, I am part of this group, and that person is somebody else. And by making the attention that that person is somebody else, they're kind of protecting themselves. So when you've been through a lot of bullying, that, especially at a fundamentally developed mental age, um, you have this survival instinct or you tend to have the survival instinct. I don't want to speak on behalf of anyone, but it just trends in general, to want to be part of a group because the group is safe. Obviously, nowadays, we're not going to get eaten by lions, but at the same time, we still have those social structures and we still go by that group mentality. Whether or not we've outgrown it, and whether or not we overcome it is up to the individual um, and not just acting on impulse. So how do we tie that back to Mishima? So you kind of notice him starting to really want to force himself into the group. He really wants to be a part of the Phantom Thieves and it seems to be he really wants to be part of that spotlight. He wants to be, he wants to redeem himself for the actions that he did take but he doesn't want to be that other anymore. So even though, yes, he's learned his lesson regarding completely throwing someone under the bus for his own gains, he didn't really do any self-reflection. He knows what he did was wrong because he hurt somebody else. And that's still a, a great first step for Mishima, right? That just that little jump of being like, I did something shitty and I shouldn't have done that. That's great. A lot of people never get past that. Um, that has a lot to do with shame. He notices this, but he doesn't notice what's going on inside of him because he goes on to kind of do the same thing. He goes on to try to take advantage of whatever power he can get to try to secure himself in order to be in that safe spot. So when you're looking at when he tries to hook Joker up with some girls off the fan site, that might not seem that nefarious, but he's trying to use the power or the promise of being close to that power in order to get these girls to go out with them. Was Mishima going to do anything like inappropriate them? I don't think so, but it's still deception and it's still an attempt at abuse of power. It doesn't work, obviously. Um, but. The further it goes on, as far as trying to use some of the money that he raised to have a very expensive meal, I think it's important it's an expensive place because don't get me wrong, like I don't really have a problem, say, if you go out to a business lunch and the business covers lunch because you're also having a meeting at the same time. That makes sense because they probably would have ordered food anyway. It's kind of just a nice gesture. However, Mishima specifically points out a place that is very expensive. So the idea being that it's not only just, hey, we're trying to provide food, it isn't that great, but they help the Phantom Thieves have this meeting and they had some food and the public kind of supported them. It's like, hey, 
the Phantom Thieves went out and spent like five times the amount on a normal meal under the pretense of doing something right. That's another abuse of power you see with Mishima. And you start seeing that he starts trying to divide a line himself of him trying to point out the others. Because he goes on to point out those who are talking ill of the Phantom Thieves or who he suspects to be bad and he tries to point them out. Uh, he's trying to use the power not only to feel good about himself and try to fight what he deems as bad, he also is pointing the other. He's doing the thing that was done to him growing up and He's mimicking that behavior. He wants to be secure and safe, and it's not really any different than with Kamashita. Um, it might be slightly more different because he knows the Phantom Thieves aren't bad, but he's using the power in the same way. And that's really the crux of his arc. Uh, Mishima doesn't really know how to socialize well. But he utilizes social media in order to try to socialize. And by using that, he abuses power. And that's really the nefarious thing about social media. And I don't mean to come off sounding like some old curmudgeon, even though like I'm, I'm part of the older demographic of people in this fandom. But I have experienced firsthand, and this is going into anecdotal evidence, this really isn't scientific. Um, I might draw from some scientific concepts or some psychological concepts, but this is all anecdotal. Um, I grew up as social media was becoming to be a thing, so to speak. So you had your AOL, your MSN Messenger, you had those chat rooms, but if you just connected with the people you knew, and that was just like having a conversation with I am, it wasn't really that consuming of your life um, unless you were just always on the computer which I mean I was but that's a whole separate thing um, you didn't really have to go to those chat rooms and even when you did there are specific chat rooms where you had certain interests and that was fun um, you didn't spread your real information it was very important not to use your real name on the internet there is all of this kind of security that was kind of drilled into you and honestly like a lot of my social interactions revolved around it uh some for the good because i am a better writer than i am speak there is also a downside to it it opened up a lot of avenues for me to be taken advantage of in ways that i probably wouldn't have in person um and a lot of it just has comes down to text. It comes down to wanting instant reaction from someone. With how prevalent, because even at that time when social media was relatively new to the mainstream, it really took up a lot of my life. But it really just became more and more prevalent when smartphones came around. Because even though people had smartphones in high when I was in high school, um, for the most part, not everyone did. Um, I got my first smartphone when I turned 18 when I went to university. Um, so the concept of having this smartphone where you can constantly be on that social media because even though I was very entrenched in social media, there was a separation, right? I wasn't always at a computer and that separation I think is a little important. Um, but I don't think it's a thing I can say like, oh man, like people need to be off their social medias forever. That's not really going to happen. It's not realistic. It's very much at our fingertips now. Having instant feedback, likes, uh, reposting, uh, comments, followers, all of those things are positive reinforcement, right? They're things that you are receiving in response to a certain action and that response that classical conditioning is very very effective and it also works with our brain chemistry especially 
those who respond pretty well to extra dopamine. Um, those who are prone to addiction, those with ADHD, those extra dopamine kind of like shots in the brain, they're great. Um, but that also reinforces what is good and what is bad. Um, and then that gets break broken down into, am I good or am I bad? And there's no gray area. And the concept of gray area is really hard to approach the more we have extremists. It's not an easy conversation to have, but it's very hard to bring an extremist in from that when the response is either you are good or you are bad. And that all comes down to shame. No one wants to be either good or bad. No one wants to be rejected by the group. Rather than changing everything about yourself, either falsely, um, by lying, or by actually having an internal thought process about, am I doing the right thing? Am I justified? Am I staying by my morals? Why do I think this way? And why am I acting this way? That's a very hard thing to do. It's, very, it's a thing that hurts to do a lot of the time. But the easier route is just to find a different cohort. It's to find a different group of people that will give you the feedback you want. And we see this happening this week, because holy moly this week, like that's, that's a whole other thing that's not video games, but can be tied into this conversation, which is why I even had the like urge to bump this video up more than anything else. Um, but we need to be aware of how we interact with social media and how social media makes us feel. Um, and again, I'm going to sound like an old person here where I'm like, all these kids want to be on their Twitch streamers with their Minecrafts and their PewDiePies and whatnot. But it really is important to have this education, to have this conversation, um, that we are having this feedback loop. Whether or not you choose to abstain from that feedback loop, myself, I disconnected from Instagram when I went through my own personal stuff um, because I found it to be a lot more harmful for me than good. Whether you abstain or not, that's a whole other question, but you need to be aware of how you're interacting with that media and how people on those platforms interact with you. Uh, so. Just to tie it back in, because I know it's a little tangential, I know it's a little all over the place, but the concept of being taken advantage of, um, and by somebody who has that power, you need to be aware that those people exist, and they're not the kind of people that go bump in the night. Um, a lot of times they aren't the pro-MAGA people screaming, there are people who seem perfectly normal because they are because there's not this isn't a concept of are you good or are you evil if you played some smt um this is your neutral this is the true path if you're looking at smt4 but you're looking at the idea that they're not good or bad they're actions and actions based off of decisions actions based off of past experiences and because of that, you need to be very aware and self-aware. And that's very difficult when social media can also be escapism, right? Because if I'm anxious, I'm like, oh man, I don't want to think about X, Y, and Z. Uh, let me scroll on Twitter. And sometimes that can be more anxiety inducing, but it can also be escapism, right? And the concept of escapism in itself also isn't. If you do take the time to address what you're anxious about, say there are things that you need to do that you've been putting off, uh, you can be aware of those things and still address those things and have your anxiety still be there. There's a time to check out of your anxiety, basically. There's a time where it's like, okay, I'm not avoiding the problem, but the problem is still there. Do I sit there and think about it all day or do I try to move on? Do I try to distract myself? So in that concept, escapism innately isn't bad in itself. It's the same thing with video games, like, hey, maybe I did everything I needed to do, I'm still anxious, 
technically I could work more on what's making me anxious, but I can't. What am I going to do? Am I going to sit here thinking about it and ruminating about it? Or am I going to go play some games? I'm try to play some games, probably. So when we are in that state of escapism, we tend to be less self-aware. Um, and that kind of comes from this concept that I actually know more from acting than I do from psychology, um, even though they are related just as far as my own personal experience, um, is we always have this state of ourselves, right? That we're not constantly thinking about how we're feeling or how other people are feeling. That's a lot of energy to exert all of the time. So there's always going to be times where you're in this state of just being automatic. You're going to be in this state where you're just doing things and your whole thing is I'm safe. I am just doing my thing. I'm safe. I'm just doing my thing. It's this little safe bubble and it's not bad to be in that state, but sometimes you have to be out of that state. You have to be aware of your emotions and how raw that is because those things are very intense. Um, but being in that state of I'm safe, everything's okay, I'm not thinking about it, can also be a little dangerous. Um, and again, not innately, but if you're not self-aware when you're interacting in communities, such as gaming communities, um, you can become susceptible to being taken advantage of. Because at the end of the day, your Mishimas, your content creators, your fandom leaders, they're not your friend. And I don't mean that like they hate you, they don't know you, but that's the whole point. They don't know you and you don't know them. Um, you see that with voice actors, you see that everywhere basically, anywhere anyone can have influence, there are always going to be people who take advantage of that influence. Because some people genuinely want to be a community creator or a community organizer because they like sharing content. They like getting people together and having conversations about things they're passionate about. Uh, you have voice actors who love to act and they love to bring characters to life. You have people who genuinely have good intentions. But because those things take a spotlight, you're always going to have people who have chased that for the power that it presents, whether or not they're aware of it. And that's really why you have to be aware of it. I don't mean to sound preachy because this is also something I've personally experienced. I myself have been taken advantage of by creators, um, by big names in certain fandoms or websites and promises of careers and whatnot. Those things are things that I've all, I've gone through. I wouldn't say that the outcomes were as bad as some people's were, but whether it's the sleazy person at your school or the voice actor you look up to or the community organizer that seems so nice and cool and always likes your posts, those are all things you have to be aware of. You have to be aware of the feedback loop. Um, and again, that's not easy and it's not victim blaming because if you're taken advantage in that way, that is not your fault. That is not something that I'm saying you need to look out for it. And if you are taken advantage of, then that is your fault. That's not what I'm saying whatsoever. Um, the people who hurt other people should be held accountable. Um, their actions, whether or not they meant good or bad, still have consequence. But you also owe it to yourself to do what you can to spot those things too. You are the only person who can really protect yourself against those things and those things with critical thought, with really thinking through who you are and who someone else is being aware of that feedback loop of likes and retweets and comments and all those fuzzy good feelings because social media is basically a platform that is providing content based off other people's thoughts and feelings. It is for profit. 
At the end of the day, these websites are for profit. They do not care about the individual, which is part of being part of the free market. So there always has to be that awareness. And I just don't think people talk about it enough. But I also think that Persona 5 is a great example of that. Mishima is a great example of what happens when you need that positive feedback loop. Um, social media is just the tool that amplifies it, right? These things exist out of social media. Mishima released that information on social media, but it was because of Kamoshida. It was because of him wanting to be part of the group. Now, did Kamoshida pray on Mishima and his innate desire to be accepted? Of course he did. So again, I'm not victim blaming Mish Mishima for being in that situation. At the same time, he didn't learn from that situation, right? He went on and basically became the bully himself. He went on and tried to abuse his power himself. And I just want to encourage everyone to be a little self-aware of that. Um, so I think that's all I really have to say. Um, I guess I'll just talk a little bit more about the past few years, um, just briefly because I don't really want to go into the details, but I've had my own stuff go on. Um, I've had to be a little more self-aware myself of what I can handle, what I can't handle. And unfortunately making videos was really not the focus. Um, especially when those things come with managing Patreon, because I mean, I'm always really thankful when people support me on Patreon. I don't want to encourage people to at this time, to be perfectly honest. I don't think I can really keep up with making videos and doing Patreon at the same time. I don't think I can make that promise to people. Obviously, I'm going to keep thanking the people who did donate. Um, those donations, when they didn't go to making videos, honestly went to helping me buy food. Um, so I don't, it's not, I feel bad. I feel bad that I haven't been able to provide the content that I wanted to provide to people, um, regardless of being a Patreon supporter or not, because I feel like it's something that I owe. Um, I think that life is a set of transactions and you owe people certain things, whether that's just being nice to someone, whether you owe someone respect, whether you you want to exchange niceties, and I don't know if I have the capability of holding up those sorts of things. But I do want to thank people for them because they do mean a lot to me. I know that I don't interact as much with the community as I used to. Again, that goes back to what I can and can't handle and being honest about that. I think we all need to be a little honest about that, especially given uh, <laughs> given the past year or so. Um, I'm also back in school, uh, which is exciting and terrifying and also means that I can't promise regular content at specific times. I'm also working around the fact that I can't afford to really have my medication right now. Um, and that's been hard in and of itself. So I basically, when I have the ability to make content, I will. Uh, whether that's once a month or twice a month or three times in one week and then nothing for two months. Um, I'm not here to please the algorithm. I just, I want to make content. I, I want to have these conversations with people. Uh, whether I respond super well or not is another thing. I do read, I read all comments from videos up until probably six months after the video comes out. Um, after that it gets a little out of hand. Uh, but I just, I just wanted to thank everyone for really engaging in this content. I want to be able to make videos. Um, and I find that a lot of things that hold me back are not being able to fulfill the promises that I want to make. So rather than just never releasing a video again, I want to say that 
I want to be honest and say that I thought I could do a lot more than I could. And I couldn't. And that has kept me stagnant for the past few years. And I'm, I'm really sorry about that. Like, that's, there's not really anything else to say except being honest that I can only do what I can do. And I still want to have these conversations. So if you're still listening, because I've been rambling for like a minute, I just want to thank you for listening. And let me know what you think in the comments. And if you want to give this video a like, you can. If you want to subscribe, you can. If you want to go Twitter and see me just have my brain explode about everything that's going on in the world right now, you can. If you don't want to see that, you can ups you can unfollow. That's fine because I've unfollowed people before because I just didn't want to see the content at that time. It's not anything personal. So yeah, thanks for watching.